Billy, it might as well be Christmas morning because we officially have finally gotten to the regular season and the Red Wings regular season starts tonight. They're opening up in New Jersey and I could not be more excited to see what this team is made of. What are you looking forward to seeing tonight? Well, I'm really excited to see how the lines end up coming together. Uh, it was uh, a bit of a, a problem through through the preseason so far, you could say. I don't know if I want to use the word problem, but they've been trying everything to figure out what's going to work. I want to start by talking about what players have impressed us through the preseason. And we did put out a poll to the community, and we got roughly 150 answers on each one. And uh, we started with the free agents that we signed who impressed us. And coming in at a strong, strong 69%. Uh, Daniel Sprong. And then in second with 27% was Ghost, 4% for Comfort, 2% for Rhymer. Josh and I also came together to discuss this, uh, not being influenced by the community poll whatsoever. And we came up with Sprong and Comfort were our top two. Nice. (laughs) So Sprong Sprong was an easy pick, though. That dude was just at every opportunity he had in the preseason. It felt like he was just he was looking for any excuse to fire it at the net. That dude wants to shoot. That dude wants to score. And we were saying this when we signed him. You know, the the Mm -hmm. name kind of caught us a little off guard. We looked into it. We looked at his highlights and we told you guys to check his uh check his goal scoring highlights from his previous years it's not just regular you know oh you shot the puck at the net sometimes it goes in the dude creates scoring opportunities and what we were seeing in the preseason was examples of that just looking for any opportunity to give the team a chance to score firing at the net with one timers uh making the move to create openings that he needed to it was impressive it's it's what you hope to see from a guy like that i'm with you i think it was in the red and white scrimmage game that they had you and i were watching it together and i laughed out loud because i think within like a seven to ten second span he took three or four shots the puck just yep. kept finding its way back to him and he just kept letting them rip so we absolutely love seeing that we know that this team needs goal scoring i think we may have found some depth scoring out of sprung and only coming in with a four percent from the community and this was my pick personally was comfort and this guy has played all through like all of our special teams he was on the pk he was on the power play he's our true number two center he's you know actually guiding the kids out there you could see him actually being a mentor on the ice for them and it's exactly what we wanted this signing to be we need that reliable number two center a lot of people were starting to doubt that and Finding a guy when we already talked about going through the roster before, we're starting to lack like guys that we I think can trust on the PK. And he's stepping up and he's starting to do it. If you can get that out of your number two and number three center and keep Larkin out of that responsibility as like a top priority, and you can open up Larkin to more, Comfort is doing it. Comfort and Cop can be those guys and uh Lalone has been talking about it for a while now, getting that depth. I think we found it in these two. And I think Comfer has kind of flown under the radar and that community poll really kind of told that to me. Yeah, and if you want to be a part of that community poll, just make sure you sub to the channel. It'll pop up on your YouTube feed. Uh, We're just reading off results from you guys who participated. So if you did participate um, and you want to elaborate on your selection, throw it in the comments uh, down below right now. Uh, But the other poll that we put out was a similar question, just which players impressed you in the preseason. But this was out of the drafted talent that the team had. So the community came together and very strongly agreed at 76% that Danielson stood out the most out of the drafted group. And I think that is that that's completely accurate. We talked about it before we started recording. We'll get more into that. Uh, 18% was Edvinson, 3% Soderblom and 2% for Casper. Uh, I, I like the eight, you know, the 18%, uh, a good chunk of you gave some respect over to Edvinson, but it's no surprise with Danielson uh, easily taking the majority of you guys uh, and your attention at 76% of you being impressed by Danielson, because what we saw was someone who was comfortable, someone who Mm -hmm. was, if needed to could play at this level. And I I don't think seeing him go down um, and play in the minors and play, uh, he's going to the WHL, right? Yep. Has to go all the way back. So seeing that doesn't, that doesn't worry me about him whatsoever. Two two years ago, if we had drafted Danielson, he'd be starting night one, and that would be your Lucas Raymond for the year. Yep. Um, it's only because the team, the uh, the situation of the team and the state of the team has changed that Danielson 
isn't he doesn't need to be thrown to the wolves right now and play against NHL talent. Like he can develop more and hone his skills more, um, you know, get more used to the Red Wing system before being brought up. But I'm telling you, if he needed to start night one, I think I think he would impress. I think he would look good, but he just doesn't he doesn't need to be rushed like that right now. There's time to let someone like that grow. Um, what do you think and who else are you looking at? I completely agree with you on Danielson. He just looked like he fit in. He didn't excel, but he wanted the puck. I loved seeing that. He wanted to shoot. You love seeing it. You want to see the drive. You want it to see someone want to succeed and not just take the back seat in those scenarios. But we are going to talk about another person. I guess you could call them a victim of the same thing that Danielson is now uh, going through in Edvinson. And he is not going to be making the starting roster simply because he would be in our overall depth chart through our entire system, the eighth defenseman. And we acquired a lot during this offseason. Um, I don't think that it speaks poorly on him whatsoever to still go down. He's 20 years old. I'll say it again. He's 20 years old. And if we needed him to be in the NHL, he could. He could be your cider if you absolutely needed it. But this team has already stated that they're in a different position than they have been in the past. We want them to perform better. And it starts with putting in players that you're confident and have actually performed in the NHL before, which is what we have, rather than going in with blind hope that a 20-year-old is going to go win you the Calder again. We were blessed with more cider, and I feel like it's starting to taint some Red Wings' opinions on well, this guy needs the opportunity to go do the same thing. It was a pretty special right. case on Maurice Sider. Let's recognize like how special he truly is. Well, let, let me let me speak for some commenters that I know we've gotten, and I will I'll, I'll present you the question that I know that they would want to ask. And rather than responding in a comment, you can just answer right here. What would you say to the Red Wing fan who looks at the acquisitions of someone like uh, Petrie or Hall? And be like, well, we didn't need to bring in guys like that. We had someone like Edvinson who could have played. So really the, the the quote problem that we have that we can't bring Edvinson up was created unnecessarily. It didn't need to be that problem didn't need to exist. What would you say to the Red Wing fan that is upset at seeing these uh more Red Wing defensemen, veteran defensemen who you know they probably believe don't have nearly as high of a ceiling as Edvinson? And that's who's holding Edvin, Edvinson down. Well, we absolutely don't have to rush him. I, I already said a few seconds ago, he's only 20 years old. And we want this team to be able to compete. It, it's no longer just playing rookies and hoping things get better. But Steve Eiserman has made fantastic signings. Like, let's not ignore how good, like, a Hall signing, a Mata signing has been, how good a Ghost signing can be, like, a Petrie one can be, to already just make this team better, giving the younger guys, like Cider, a better environment, Raymond, a better environment to continue to grow. You put the load of an entire organization on their back their first two years in the league, and they did well. They didn't excel, like, to actually be able to carry the team, but that's, that's like, Crosby... Bedard, McDavid caliber weight that you're putting on them to carry you into the playoffs. We want to make the playoffs. We want to play meaningful hockey. It's what Larkin wants. It's what's Debrinket wants. It's what everyone in this system on this roster wants. And for right now, Petrie will do a better job of that. Ghost will do a better job of that. Hall will do a better job of that than Simon Edvinson. And Edvinson can continue to grow in the AHL. It's not like a video game where he suddenly halted because you didn't put him at the best that he could beat at that time. Cider spent an entire year down there, and then he came to the NHL, and he performed. And maybe that's what our entire uh, staff is feeling right now. Maybe our amateur scouting and entire development system is thinking, you know what? Edmondson does look fine, but he could use a year. And for all we know, Petrie won't be with this team next year. Possibly. I'm just throwing out a name. Ghost could not be here next year. They're going to also get injured. And Simon Edmondson will be a guy that you pull up into that system. You'll, he'll start flowing in because those are issues that we have run into in the past is I'm just going to throw out a name. Xavier will let you remember that name. It's no one you got excited about, but now it would be Simon Edvinson. You'll get excited about that. It's an opportunity for that player to do better. I think it's short-term gratification, disappointing. I think in two to three years, we could be so happy that this is the way that it went. 
I think it's a fair opinion. I also think it's fair to I think it's fair to to within a reason think the other way. I see both I definitely see both sides and I empathize with the fan who went through the Holland era of just letting prospects drown in the minors forever. That was always a thing whereas we never brought anyone up. So I could totally see the little bit of that PTSD of being a Wings fan in the early 2010s and just be like, when are we going to give these guys a chance? And who knows? Maybe if things are done differently with the, in the uh, Holland era with our prospects, you know, who knows? Maybe we were going to be able to be a retooling team and not have that destroy the economy of our um, of our minor system, our farm system. Um, but no, I, I I get it. I totally I can see why somebody would want to see Edvinson get their shot. Like you, you can only you could remove one of those names in there. Um, a few that you could make the argument. Yeah, I think this this would be a prime opportunity for someone like Edmondson to play in meaningful hockey games. Um, but at the same time, to go off of one of the parts you said, he's going to get his shot. They're going to get hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, it's it feels a little weird to tell someone, yeah, you're you know that's that's what we're banking on is people getting injured and then you're going to get to play. But the reality is that's probably exactly the situation that Edmondson's in. He's going to get his shot when either someone needs rest or someone gets hurt mm-hmm. and, and, and that's, that's when you'll get to see more of them. Uh, hopefully, hopefully when that does happen, he, he makes it tough for Eiserman to send him back down. Yep. That's all you can ask for. So that's the preseason. Let's look forward to tonight. Game one. Uh, you know, there's only so many sources you can try to cling on to for what the lines are going to look like. Cause it could change, you know, an hour before game time, yep. right before the puck drops, who knows what could change, but um, with the most recent info that we could find as the moment that we are recording this, uh, we have some lines to look at. You want to take this a line at a time? You want to read the whole thing off and give the thoughts? What are you thinking? Uh, we can just go straight through and then talk about each one afterwards. In that top line, Larkin centering Debrinket and Perron, Comfer centering Fabry, Raymond, Cop centering Rasmussen and Sprong, and the fourth line being rounded out with Valeno centering Costine and Fisher. On defense, we got Wallman and Sider as a pair, Schrott and Petrie as a pair. And then noted in there very specifically was that Mata, Gostas Bear, and Hall were rotating around in the practice. So it feels like this should be, I will say should, because this is the day before the season starts. You should have something assembled together on what you're actually going to do tomorrow. This is what we should see. And we saw bits and pieces pieces of it through the the uh, preseason. Um, and most recently, I know that we saw Rasmussen up on the top line replacing Prawn. You saw Raymond up in that spot. And I I think that this is possibly the most interesting thing that we have to look forward to in the next month or so. I think it really could take a month to figure out which of these players fit with these players, where in the lineup do they belong, who's competing up on that top line the best, because what we saw at Erasmussen, I thought he could do well up there. He looked awkward on the right wing. Something just wasn't clicking in that scenario. When you put Raymond and Dabrinkit out there, the line's a little small. So you, now you're putting Perron in there. Does Perron look a little slow? That's what we talked about before, too, is what what would be the concern of Perron up there? Possibly a step behind the other two guys, maybe dragging them behind. So looking at a second line, I think we already discussed, Comfer's got that second spot locked up. Absolutely love seeing him there. Cop in the third line center. Expect it. That, yeah, that's, that's, I, that's what you're looking for. I, I like that you can look at, especially these top three lines, you can just you can see what the you can see what the purpose is. You can mm-hmm. see who's you, you you already know based on everything we talked about, everything we watched, who's playing what role. I could tell you in, in line two and three that you, you're hoping Raymond and Sprong are going to be the guys that could put the puck in the net. Um, and then when I look at the top line, and this is I kind of just thought this right now as you were talking. This is a this is a high expectation, but I just if this if that line clicks, I want to see that line put to goal or put together a goal every game at least. Yeah. That'd be really nice. I I look at someone like Larkin to and Perron, three guys that can absolutely shoot the puck. Absolutely score Larkin, who I hope to see turned into an elite playmaker and have two guys surrounding him like Perron and to that can score. Yep. uh, At times at an elite level, hopefully to being that like more elite goal scorer, Perron being the more experienced veteran of the, of the three. 
I would love to see this line go out there and produce and just you're starting every game one to nothing. Like you're just you, you can count on this line to be the one that scores you a goal every night. I that that could be a high bar uh, considering the the state of the team, but I mean that's what that's what you hope to see out of when you it. put that line together. <laughs> that's what you hope for. That's what you want to see. That's your yep. that's a that's a good case uh, scenario there with with the second line with Raymond. God, I, we, we talked about it in our videos throughout the offseason. I want him to bounce back so bad. Yep. I want him to come out strong. I think putting him on a second line is a good opportunity for that. I think Comfort, solid, solid two-way player for us so far. Someone that can uh, be relied on defensively. Fabry surprises me a little bit. I was very high on Fabry when we traded for him. I was very, very high but I feel like that's just started to cool off on me. Maybe it's the injuries. Maybe it's just not seeing him play enough. Maybe it'll re-spark for me as soon as I see him skate a little bit this season. Um, the second line, I, I I would go to say that I'm not sure Fabry and Raymond are going to click. I'm just like putting through what I see out of the two players. I'm not sure it's going to click. I hope it does. Uh, third line, though, that's where I'm back on the back on the train of I see what this is supposed to do. Yep. I, I understand why these pieces are put together. I see how it can perform. Uh, Rasmussen going to be driving play, going to be controlling the puck, working around the edges. Uh, Cop going to be probably right there in there with him. And if you have Sprong just hovering around, you've already seen. You put that puck anywhere near him, puck's going to the net. And then you have Cop and Rasmussen driving the net. I, it just feels like a a really attack the net from every angle kind of line. And if you can get that out of your third line, you get some third line scoring going. It's a key to success in the NHL. It just is. As soon as you start seeing teams being able to score down there, it's fantastic. I'm just saying this is my, if this is my NHL franchise mode, I'm finding a way to get Glenn Denning as my fourth line center. So all lines <laughs> go through Michigan. That's <laughs> that's coming from a Spartan fan. Like you're, you're already that close. There's gotta be a Michigan center out there that would love to come and be our fourth line center somewhere. It's, it's cool to see. I'm with you because even what I saw in the preseason, I'm not a Valeno fan. I'll, I'll go on record. I don't like him at center. It just doesn't feel good. It, it feels when he puts like up twenty five this behind. year. Make sure we make sure we blend this twenty five total points. Yeah, maybe that wouldn't be that bad for a third line for a third <laughs> liner actually. Well, it, fourth line, so maybe it gets a little better. Yeah, four, I just yeah, fourth line. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm pretty off the Valeno train. I'd love for him to prove me wrong. It's just it's going to take a lot. I'm going to have to see some stuff that I wasn't even seeing in preseason yet. So hopefully he can pick that up. But what I about love defense? about defense. Hold on. Let's let's not look over this fourth line real quick. I love Fisher. I love Fisher. He has played hard. He's a role player. You know what? Detroit loves him. Detroit loves the role players. As long as you don't end up paying them way too much money and put them on a first line and hope that they're going to do really well for you. As long as really specific. <laughs> but your role players. Man, they fit in in Detroit, and Fisher's doing it. Fisher's grinding hard, coasting, absolutely coming in as advertised. Uh, I I feel like he could possibly get more opportunities moving forward. I've liked what I've seen out of him, but it just haven't seen a lot. So that's that's my look on the fourth line. I did not want to look over Fisher whatsoever. Okay. What about the defense? What about the <laughs> defense? We're sticking with our tried and true. Wolman Sider, something that absolutely like clicked, that. absolutely clicked in the second half of last season. Yeah, anyone who's played that's the thing with playing uh defense. Anybody who's played defense at any level, I feel like you can agree. When you've got a partner you just work well, you work well with, it's it's a little bit different than a forward line where it's a three person click. And there's something about the two man pairing of when you just feel confident and you just look and look over and just trust that player. I feel like that's what you got with Sider and Wallman. And I hope I hope that this is your pair all year long. I would love this mm -hmm. to be our top pair and everything behind. It's just got to figure it out because cider looks phenomenal. Yep. Wallman. Would you call last year's breakout year in terms of? Oh yeah, fitting in absolutely. Here? So 100%. With Wallman having his breakout year. That this, this should be, that should be the two slots. You just don't even have to look at all season, which feels 
I mean, it might sound like I'm saying something super simple, but this team has been so in the dirt mm-hmm. for a while that it's it feels. When's the last time you had a, a top two, your top two defensemen in, in this town that you could be like, okay, it's you know, I know this is a different level, but like I think like okay, Lidstrom and Rafalski. You look at that and you go, they'll do their thing, and then we just got to worry about this. Yep. I think that you look at Cider and Cider and Walmart, and we can all collectively just breathe a sigh of relief that we can open a game five on five and feel like Larkin to and Perron Wallman cider. It, that feels good. Yes. That feels like you could, it feels like if you just had to pick five V five, no lines behind it against any team in the league. I l- at least like our chances to compete with any other teams, five V five yep. of top line of both. I agree with you. Um, I do want to point out that I've been impressed with Woman on the PK last year. Yes. I wasn't this preseason so far. Putting the body on the line, head on a swivel, stick is moving. Looks like he does it just fine. Absolutely surprised, proven wrong, and believing that he shouldn't be there. But what you said on, you know, finding that D partner, feeling confident with him, I think we got that in line number two. Sherrod and Petrie. I know Red Wings fans are very quick yeah. to the gun on Sherrod. Uh, yeah, we talked about that when in the in our Petrie signing video. It was like yep. we were doing our research and and we found that Sherrod and Petrie have played together. So, yeah, you're they right. had good, like, advanced stats compared to other players across the league, the different pairings that were happening. Yep. They did well together in Montreal. And and the thing is, a lot of people are anti Sherrod. And I get it. Mm-hmm. He, he, if he made half as much money, I'm sure a lot of you wouldn't really care so much. But yeah, the, the, it's already happened. He's gotten paid. So we can sit here and complain about it, or we can, ju- we can just whine until uh, Sherrod's gone. Or... You can do what Eisenman's doing and trying to make that signing work. Yep. And a way to make that signing work is you push Sherratt with someone who he has played well with previously. That's exactly what your line two is. So you've got a second line that has a history of, of positive output on, on a on a Montreal team that found its way to the finals. Yep. If you're gonna if you're if you're gonna hate on Sherratt, fine. I get it. That was a lot Go of money it. and it, it did it did not look great. And he didn't look great last year overall. I think this is your I think you kind of almost have to come together and in this next season, give him a shot, give Eisenman a chance to make this work. If it still looks bad, I'm probably with you. I, I, th- I think I'm with you. Okay. You know what? The Sherrod experiment didn't work. Yep. Fine. Move on. I also want to point out that I know that I'm negative on some people and, and I'm not too shy to say that. And I'll, I'll say it in our videos, but I do want to point out that there was that uh, guy, I believe he was on TikTok, and he was a big Phillies fan. And there's that player on the Phillies, last name Turner, who had been doing awful for them for like months on end. And the city was getting on him. Also, it's Philly. I Philly on your back has to be heavy. Um, but like all the national stations were starting to get on him. And this one guy on TikTok's like, you know what? Let's just give him a standing ovation. Let's just do it. Like, who cares? Let's just be super happy for him. And, like, the actual change that ha- that had in his play would be wonderful. I know Sherratt just went through a terrible family tragedy. Prayers out, thoughts out to the family on that. But, like, I would love the opportunity for fans to just be positive at the start and, like, hope and wish the best for someone rather than publicly just, like, Pooping on the player when you're not giving him the opportunity this year. Oh, don't, don't if root we're against the guy. To, don't root for him to fail. Yeah, that's, that's weird. That's weird. Yeah, that is just like, like, that's not even like, why would you not want the Sherratt signing to look good? Like, it's like, don't, you can't just look at the money. Of, it's the same thing with, with, uh, with Hall, mm-hmm. where everyone looks at why are we paying this guy? It's like, okay, well, we're past that. You could, we've, we've, we, we're past free agency. Off season is now over. We are in the regular season. Now it's time to put your jersey on. Let's see. All right, Iserman, let's see if what you put together works. Let's see if this works. Let's root for all, root for someone like Sherratt. Because wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if mm-hmm. Iserman pulled off a genius move of getting someone like Petrie to get give Sherratt a partner he could work with? Wouldn't it be cool if we took someone like Hall who wasn't working for Toronto because he was being completely misused and putting in a role that he just wasn't built for, mm-hmm. and now we're putting him here on the third defensive line and he thrives? Wouldn't that be a cool thing to root for rather than boo and be upset anytime it goes out on the ice and hope he fails so that you can feel superior and you can feel like you correctly predicted that yeah, it was a bad Yeah, you won the Twitter signing. war, bro. 
I yeah, won the like, Twitter war. You know what's a cool what's a cooler Twitter uh, war to win? The is Stanley when you <laughs> when, when you're going against all the other fans of other teams that talk about this being de toilet and 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 uh, what, what's what's the the dead wings are back and all yeah. that. That's the one I want to win. So I don't care who's on the roster. Let's just put one together that freaking wins, and then we can all just be happy. Yep. Let's just go back to winning. Wasn't that cool? Red Wings fans, <laughs> when we used to win all the time, wasn't it cool when, when preseason ended and we were already selling playoff tickets? Let's go back. Let's yep. let's root for that. Yes. We and spent right. a lot of time on that second line defensive pair, but you know what? Schrott, is, Schrott deserves it. Schrott de- deserves the loves, deserves the hype. He's going to have a fantastic year, I said it. And we will flip the script immediately if he sucks this week. You know what? I'll give him <laughs> 60 games. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if he's bad after 60 games, playoffs are done. And yeah, let's figure out what to do with that contract. Fantastic five, six, seven defenseman. I think that these guys, especially Ghost, especially Ghost, would easily be a five, six defenseman on any team right now. The way that he can play on a power play, you're getting that out of your five or six defenseman. Like, just thinking about it, you're thinking about like quarterbacking power plays. I think recently because they just played was uh, the Penguins, and you had Carlson playing second um, to Latang. So you know they moved Carlson out of the the quarterback spot, and they have Latang there. That's their number one and two. They're putting them out there at the start. If we get to put Ghost out as like our number five or six, that's so good. I don't. Uh, I just don't want to undersell it. I'm probably overselling at this point. But it, Possibly, but you can also look at it as <clears throat> if the Sherratt experiment doesn't work, you got a spot that you got a few yep. guys that could go up into that spot pretty, pretty comfortably. Yep. But we just have that that rotation of those three that can fit fit in different nights depending on maybe on who we're playing, right? Like if yep. you know you're playing a bigger, tougher, slower team, let's say Minnesota, maybe you give the pass to Hall that night. You're like Hall, go in there, be the bigger guy. Maybe you're playing a young, faster team like. New Jersey. Maybe you put in Ghost. Okay. I, I'm so, with you. So other little like tidbits about our final roster. Raz has been popping in and out everywhere. He's been playing center. He's been playing wing. He's been playing top line. So he's been playing you at all. Line. They're just trying that they're just trying to find a spot that they're comfortable with. And they're it's maybe it's you could look at it as, oh, he could do anything. Or or uh, inside the locker room here in the in the front office, they say, what can, can he do anything? <laughs> and they, I, they're just trying to find a spot for him. I definitely do not subscribe to the second one. I really <laughs> feel like he is the one that uh, what's there's a, a game I'm trying to think of. It's like a card game. Um, no, it's like, yeah, he's like the domino in dominoes, right? Like if you have like the six sided die or whatever, it like fits in like almost anywhere and you just don't know when or where you're supposed to use it because of how versatile it is. That's what he is. We keep moving him everywhere trying to figure out like does Fabry play better with Raymond or does Fabry play better with Sprong? Well, then that means we have to move wherever he goes, right? Yeah, but it's Rasmussen. We're fine moving him. He's going to do well over there. That's how I feel about him. If you've ever used dominoes for anything other than just putting them in a line and knocking them over, let us know in the comments. Billy yeah, has apparently might be. played the actual dominoes I, game. I could no be one has played actual, wrong. No one has actually <laughs> played the game dominoes. Let's be clear on that. I could that. be so wrong on that, and I would love it if I am. Um, but, yeah, also solidifying comfort, absolutely center number two. Uh, I also read on Twitter that there is no discussion of cop moving to a wing. So I think you got your number two and three there. And yeah, we're just talking about that rotation. It looks like Hall might be the guy odd man out. Maybe Hall and Mata are going to be sharing the scratch uh, responsibilities through the year. Um, But okay. Ultimately, what does this mean for like the younger guys on our team? Right? Yeah. Means Kosa and Casper going to GR. Expected for me. I didn't expect Casper to be, you know, hopping over Valeno. I wanted it to happen. Just that's why I had Rasmussen down there, is I didn't want Valeno in the lineup. But Casper Costa going down. Host is scaring me. I'll just be very open and honest. It's I'll jump first if you need me to. I'll jump first so you have something to land on. I think I'm out on Kosa. He looked bad. He he did not he did he did he didn't look good in the preseason. Or not the priest. He didn't look good in the uh, in the camp. He he was getting lit up. It, it 
I, I don't want to say he'll never be able to play at the NHL level, but I'm going to say right now, I don't think he's ever going to perform and live up to the trade up for and take in the first round. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I, I can't, yeah. I can't imagine him, him suddenly taking a dramatic uptick that is suddenly worth tr- not just taking when he, you know, whenever you get him in the first round or what, but giving up additional assets to take him earlier in the first round. It, he looked, it, it looked so disappointing that I've kind of, I've told you this before. I've mentally checked out where I feel like I'm not like keeping an eye on him. If he, if one day I, I go and check and he looks like he's suddenly turned it around. Sure. But it's, it just bums me out now to see that he is just not moving forward. I am still much more emotionally invested than you are. And for the same thing that I said about Edmondson, he's 20 years old. He's 20 years old. I think it's... But what did we say? What did we say he needed to do? What was the bare minimum? Just be better. It did not look like he got better. I I would agree with you. In the limited amount that we saw, he did not meet the minimum we said we would need it for him at his age. Maybe that'll change in more of a regular season environment with, mm-hmm. with uh, where he's playing in uh, Grand Rapids. But as of just the limited sample size before all that happened, I feel just bummed about it. Hopefully the Grand Rapids performance brings me back, but that yeah. was a, that was a tough showing against non, a lot of non NHL talent. It yeah. was a bad showing. It was really tough, but on a brighter note, on some of our young guys who are going to be uh, not on the NHL roster, at least at the start, uh, we talked about Evanson and Danielson. They simply just look fit for NHL play. I'm happy about that. I am mildly disappointed they're not making it. We talked about them. We don't need to rehash it. And back to another negative uh, perspective here. There has been a lot of hype. I will openly admit I do not follow our farm system extremely closely. I am all about our NHL roster. I'm watching, you know, every game. I'm tuning into the tweets, what's happening inside practices, behind closed doors, everything like that. That's where my emotional investment is. And I trust others for the evaluation of our young talent. Walliner and Johansson, underwhelming. Underwhelming in the preseason. Not bad. Not bad. Do not go in our comments right now and say, Wallander did really good. Johansson did really good. They're also very young. I get that. I am telling you the hype that I have been fed from people that I trust their NHL opinions on, I feel like have oversold them. And there seems to be something missing, whether that's speed, whether it's anticipating the play, reacting to play. I don't want to say physical enough because I feel like they did feel physical enough but it felt like they were AHL defensemen. When I watch Evanson, I feel like I am watching an early NHL player. When I watch those two, I'm watching an AHL player, which they can continue to grow and be better. I'm spe- I'm strictly speaking in the now, just like we are with Kosa. We're s- strictly speaking right here, right now. Underwhelmed. I don't know if you have any opinion on them. I thought they were great. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they were uh, spectacular. No. I'm with you. It, it, they, they were neither here nor there for me. They were fine. I mean, it, yep. it, I was kind of more focused on who I thought was going to make the roster and who wasn't, which speaking of which I'm a little bummed to not see burger and make the roster. I'm, I hurts. feel, I feel like uh, I, I expected burger to find his way onto it, but you know what? Fine. You know what? Fine. If, if yeah, it needs, it, if, if you need a little bit more, it, it, he's, I feel like he's going to get a shot. I feel like he's going to play some this year when injuries happen. I feel like he'll get, mm-hmm. he'll get a few uh, shots. And like we said with Edvinson, maybe he just makes it tough for, yeah. uh, for them to send him back. Yeah. We knew that it kind of hinged on whether Valeno was going to make the roster that completely determined whether Bergeron was going to make it because Bergeron would have to beat out Sprong, Raymond, Fabry, Rasmussen, or Prawn. That is some pretty damn good company is such a young player to beat out. So if it wasn't going to be Valeno missing the roster and finding someone to play the fourth line center like a Rasmussen, um, yeah, we were going to see Bergen squeezed out. We were high. I'm still high on him. This doesn't change my like talent evaluation on him whatsoever. I think he still absolutely has all the tools that we talked about. In the past, 
And maybe this is maybe this is what uh, Edvinson is to others is what Bergeron is to me. The damn, we created that problem, but I understand it. At the same point, yeah. I I get it that a Sprung and a Fabry and a Rasmussen are going to be up there over. I absolutely get it, but I'm with you. maybe you can keep growing, keep getting better. Like you said, just make it tough. If you can make it tough on these guys to take you out of a lineup, it's it's good problems to have. They're problems. They're good problems to have. That brings us to tonight. Looking forward, looking ahead at the actual games, the actual season. We got New Jersey. Got New Jersey. Kind of, kind of a hyped up squad. A little bit, you could say. Possibly, uh, maybe even the most going into this season based on their breakout last year. Think so? It's it's tough to think of another team that has like such a change in aspirations between the two years. Yep. So with that, I think this is going to be tough. This is a tough day one game. Someone that I, I believe I had finishing second in the East. Someone I have going to the Stanley Cup finals. If you watched our prediction videos from a couple weeks ago, man, you're coming out and you're playing a very strong offensive team. This is going to test your defense. Something we already felt about this team after this preseason is that we look more solid defensively overall. It feels like every year over the last two to three years, we've been taking big strides, actual strides each year. If you look at the stats at becoming more sound defensively, and it feels like our offense has been the one to not grow as well. But this is how you would have to beat New Jersey. You have to stop their offense and you have to be able to be opportunistic with their defense. They're not a very strong defensive team. They're not a very strong goaltending team. I know Schmidt came up very strong against the Rangers in the playoffs last year. I don't think the Rangers were honestly playing that well at all. Like we, we recognize how good the Rangers can be, but I don't think they were playing up to standards. So I recognize that Vanacek and Schmidt are the weak point of the team. They, they are compared to the rest of the talent across the squad. So this is an opportunity for the Red Wings offense to hopefully be able to win a game. Like have your defense hold down the fort, have Huso be able to play well enough that he's likely going to give up probably, you know, three goals. I think it, it, it's safe to say that New Jersey will often score more than two goals a game. And they're likely to give up two or more goals a game. So this game, it feels like our offense needs to show up and our defense needs to hold down the fort. And you're hoping that Huso can give you a solid game. What are we looking at with game two? Is this Tampa? Yep, game two is Tampa. And I'll be honest, I'm more scared of them now than I was going into the season, watching them play Nashville. Guys, you're talking about a full like roster of skilled players that look ready. They look hungry. They look just flat out skilled. And the thing they're missing, gold ending. Vezlevsky's out three months. They are absolutely leaning on the strength of their entire roster. And, hey, maybe we hit a hot goalie. Goalie didn't look too hot. Okay? So, being able to, again, get pucks on net is where you're going to need to do. But I feel like Tampa is a tall glass of water, man. It is I, I think I think we're going to win one of them. I don't know which one. I think it's going to be we're, we're, we're going to look. Maybe we're going to look surprisingly eh against the Devils. But then they pop back and surprise the Lightning. Or, hey, we look good against the Devils. But then we get a wake-up call against the team that is, only, at this point, only missing their goalie. Uh, I would love to walk out of it one and one. I would, that would love be cool. to do one and one as well. If you're, I'll take that. I'll if take you're taking a one one against like two out of the top three teams, likely out of the East, that's a great start. I think if you're going to find one of them, it's going to be New Jersey. I think you're going to find New, yep. New Jersey on their heels, not ready defensively. Maybe heads a little inflated. Maybe need that early season wake up call for themselves. But expecting. Sadly, 0-2, hopeful for a one and one. No, it's different. It's different. If it was the middle of the season, yeah, it's the it's the opening week. Stuff's a little different. 
So it's just a little different. Like we took uh, Tampa to OT to start the season, like a season or two, like two years ago. You're right. It's it's just different when it's the first game. There's that hype. There's that that full crowd. But let us know what you think. Toss it down below. What are you predicting for this next week? And make sure you make sure you subscribe so you can stick with us next week when we look back at these games and look forward to the next one. So uh, let us know what you think. See you in the next one.